You're listening to the Option Alpha podcast from OptionAlpha.com, where we show you how to make smarter trades, learn how the stock market really works, and generate consistent monthly income. Monthly income. Now, your host and head trader at OptionAlpha.com, Kirk Duplessis. Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again from OptionAlpha.com, working every single week to make this the most popular investing podcast offered online because it's based on one thing and one thing only, and that's helping you guys make smarter trades. So thanks so much again for tuning in today. On today's show, we are going to be talking about high probability trading and it be basically being the holy grail of investing, or basically asking the question, is high probability trading the holy grail of investing? And I'll answer it right off the bat and tell you, no, it's not the holy grail of trading, even though some people think it is. And I think when people get started in this business and especially learn options, I think a lot of people's their eyeballs go really, really big. And this may have been you, or maybe you're just in that process right now. But the reality is, and I want to make sure we're totally clear on this, because I think this logic is too ingrained, I guess, in some people's eyes or in their heads. But the reality is, is that it does take time for this system to work. I think that options trading is by far the most powerful way that you can trade in the financial markets right now. I think the flexibility, the leverage, the math, the numbers, everything that makes options trading so great is really, really powerful and you can't get that anyplace else right now. But the trade-off to the power that options trading has is that it does take time. It also takes money. Yes, in fact, you do have to have money to make money, right? Like I often tell people all the time who try to email me and they say, well, how much money do I need to start? And you know, how much money do I need to generate a full-time income? And they're probably surprised sometimes when I say, look, you probably need a, you know, three to $5,000 at least to start to really make a good go at it. But even at that, you're not going to quit your job, you know, trading three or $5,000, right? You're going to need a couple hundred thousand dollars to really quit your job at whatever income level you think that you're going to get out of it. So it takes time. It takes money. It takes fortitude and persistence. Probably the two biggest things that I never see people do on a long-term basis. So like we have people coming in and out of our program all the time, right? And the people who stay and are have fortitude and persistence to keep going with the trading and keep going with the education are always more successful. But like anything in life, right? You basically know exactly what to do. Like it's basically given to you, like working out at the gym and being healthy. You know what to do. You know how to do it. You just have to do it long enough to see the results. And so I think that that's where people, you know, see options trading as really successful when they get started and they kind of are, you know, almost shocked and uh, I guess blinded by how successful you could be and how consistent it could be. But man, the day to day grind is really, really tough for people. And that's really one of the, the biggest struggles drawbacks. So, you know, I think like every other business, it obviously has its its drawbacks and challenges, right? For me, options trading is is much more of a game of patience than I initially thought it would be, you know, 10 years ago or so when I started doing this. And so now I realize that much more so than anything else, that it's it's just a huge game of patience and patience on not only individual trades, but also just going through cycles of drawdowns and, and really growth, you know, and you don't know when those cycles are going to happen. Something that I recently talked about on a Facebook Live that I think is really important is just this idea of sequence of returns and that the sequence of when you get your returns and how you get your returns is so critical not only to the emotional level of fortitude that you have going forward, but also to your portfolio. And so what I mean by this is that if you have an early drawdown, that could really, you know, put you in a bad position, not only emotionally to fight back against the market, but also put your portfolio in a really bad position where it's going to take a lot of time to, you know, dig out of that. And that's why I tell people all the time, like, take it easy as you get started, really become comfortable with the system, the processes, the trades, the risk size, etc. And really start small here because the sequence of how you earn your money is so important. I would much rather see people have one or two or three years of really small returns, but of positive returns than trying to overshoot it early on and having drawdowns potentially in their first couple years because it could randomly happen. We don't know when the sequence of our returns is going to be. We don't know when the market's going to go through a period that might cause a drawdown. And that could really devastate you early on. So I think that that's, you know, one of the major challenges and, and drawbacks to this, right? 
But here's the thing I can say about this, and this is something I've definitely learned over you know many years, not only just in options trading, but just I think in business and life, obviously, as you get older and hopefully wiser and continue to educate yourself. But you can't get where you're trying to go by staying where you are. And I think that that's so important is that you have to get outside of your comfort zone in some cases. You have to do things that you're not normally in a routine to do, right? And honestly, some things in life are not given to you. Like, I definitely learned that in every way, shape, and form. Like, by no means was I the best athlete in high school or college. By no means was I the smartest person in high school or college, right? And I'm not even the smartest person now. And I think that some things are just not given to you. You have to earn them. Like, I never grew up in a family that had money, right? And you have to earn all that stuff. So I've earned and worked for everything that I have. And in the world of options trading, it's not going to be given to you. You're not going to be given a system that you can just automatically trade right now, right? You have to learn and educate and work towards improving that system and working that system every day. And so I think the reality is, is that when you're not smart enough or think you're not smart enough, you just have to be more consistent. And that's all it is. You just have to be more consistent. I would venture to say that in every way, shape and form, not only in the trading world and in the investing world, but also in business, in life, in marriage, in family, it's the person who is more consistent that ends up being successful in every way, shape and form. And so like, in my opinion, I think think that I have an edge because I know I've got the consistency and persistence to outlast the smartest traders out there because they won't be trading in 20 years like I still will be. And I'll be on 30 years of trading, you know, by that time period of just every single day coming in and basically grinding out trades, right? And it doesn't take a lot of time and a lot of effort once you get into a rhythm, but it does take the consistency to basically get up every day and quote unquote, go to work, if you will, right? So I think I've got a big problem in this space, you know, with people who talk about options trading as the holy grail and really then just quit, right? Like they get so excited on it or they downplay it or they say that it doesn't work, but those are quitters. Those are people who haven't really played out the numbers, right? That don't have the knowledge and longevity to really make this thing be successful. So is options trading the holy grail of investing? No, of course not. It obviously has its drawbacks. Is it, in my opinion, one of the best ways that you can generate wealth and keep your portfolio on a consistent income path? Absolutely. No doubt about it. But it takes time, right? For that ability, that potential that you have with trading, it takes effort and work and it takes a lot of your energy to get that going initially. And for some people, that's really, really hard to do. So I want to, again, talk about this topic today because I think it's really important. I, you know, I, I get like a variation of this all the time and, you know, I see a lot of questions around this topic and it's not always this exact question, but I want to make sure that people had their head on straight here with, you know, kind of where we are in this. And obviously as we start, you know, releasing some more stuff here in the next couple episodes with our back testing and we start doing some more research and publishing that, I think you guys will see is that, you know, as you start looking at payoff diagrams of strategies that win, payoff mm -hmm. diagrams at strategies that lose, you'll start to see with our backtesting software that consistent income and or consistent trading activities always end up generating more money at the end of the day. It might not be early. It might not be in the middle of the stage. But man, when you start playing out some of these numbers over 10, 20, 30 years, you start seeing just the longevity aspect of it that becomes really successful. And that's not to say that you're not going to have your ups and downs because of course you are. But you've got to stay vigilant. You've got to stay you know, persistent and consistent with what you're doing because that's how you start breaking some of these cycles and start really, really generating some wealth. And now our favorite part of the show, Trader Q&A, where we ask a question from one of our current members about options trading. Got a question you'd like to ask Kirk to answer live on the air? Just head on over to optionalpha.com forward slash ask and hit the record button to leave a message. That's optionalpha.com forward slash ask. And now here's today's question. Hi, Kirk. My name is George. I'm from London. I heard about your site from your appearance on the Vampire Squid. My question, as options become more popular and widely traded, Will the gap between implied volatility and actual volatility decrease, thereby reducing the edge that option sellers rely on? All right. So, hey, George, thank you so much for submitting the question. And I kind of picked this question, I guess, for today's show because I think it kind of goes along the lines of this like holy grail type 
methodology or thought process that people have. And that is also this fear that people have that this edge in implied volatility is going to disappear, like it will like randomly go away in the future. In fact, we get this question all the time on the webinars that we do on Wednesdays, either with free or pro members. This question inevitably comes up all the time. I mean, probably every single week. The reality is here is that this edge or this edge that we have will not disappear. And the reason that it won't disappear is basically for two reasons. One is that implied volatility is always trying to predict the future. And whenever the future is in front of us and we are trying to predict it, no matter what we do as humans and or computers, that future is still unknown. It has not happened yet. And until the day comes that we can fast forward time and actually go into the future to see exactly where a stock will or won't trade or what news will or won't happen or what economic events will or won't happen during that time period, then we will always be trying to predict the future with implied volatility and we will always be off by some margin. And number two is that whenever that margin becomes more narrow, meaning that it, let's say that we do get better at predicting the future by a little bit, right? So we're a little bit more cognizant of how markets move, let's say 10 years down the road. It still is going to be within a range because even though we might get better, the market might surprise us and then we might have to expand out of our range, right? So market black swan events are always the check and balance of systems like this that keep systems like this and edges like this honest because as soon as you think that you know that a stock is in a range and you start or implied volatility, basically the market starts tightening up its implied volatility starts realizing that maybe the stock doesn't trade as wild as it did, boom, it has a big move and that throws everything back off, right? I mean, you look at probably like two major events that have happened in the last like 20 years, right? So like dot-com was a major one and the housing crash was a major one, right? Everyone thought that subprime loans were fine, right? Were a small part contained, everyone priced them as such. But boom, one single event, that housing crash with kind of subprime falling apart reshaped the whole price structure. So as soon as the markets think they have it in place, markets always have a black swan event like that, that kind of resets and keeps everyone on their toes, right? So I think that that's going to be the reason why it doesn't disappear, right? I always say that as long as there's a future, there will always be an edge because we're trying to predict the future with implied volatility. And we're always really, really bad at doing that. All right. So remember, if you'd like to get your question answered here on the podcast or live on Facebook and Periscope, head on over to optionalpha.com slash ask, click the big red button in the middle of the screen and leave me a private voicemail. Remember, there's no software to download or install and it's incredibly easy. Now, before we get into the closing bell segment, again, I wanted to let you know about our special podcast freebie and that's our ultimate option strategy guide. It's basically our 90 page report that walks through the entire process of opening, closing, choosing strategies for different market scenarios. Again, it's completely free and you can get it by going to optionalpha.com slash ebook or by texting in the word strategies. That's all one word to the short code 44222 if you're on your mobile device. So again, optionalpha.com slash ebook or by texting in the word strategies to 44222. Now, the closing bell. Find out which stocks we're looking at right now. Trades we're making, and hear our game plan moving forward. All right, so in today's closing bell segment, I wanted to talk about a new trade that we got into in EFA. Now, EFA is basically an ETF that covers emerging markets and has actually been on quite a bit of an uprun. I mean, from basically the beginning of the year 2016 until the time that we're doing this video now at the end of March, beginning of April, it's had a huge move from basically 56 up to about 63. So really big move. I think the move is at least at this point, maybe stalling. Some of the technicals are getting a little bit overbought. So it doesn't mean that it will stall, obviously. So we'll talk about that in the next episode, kind of talking about using technicals the right way. But, you know, in this case, I think that, you know, at least the move that's had is maybe too much too fast, right? And so it could stall at this level or at least trade range bound. And that's all we're looking for it to do. 
So implied volatility right now is around the 79, uh, 78th rank. I'm sorry, 27th rank. So it's not insanely high. It's not insanely low. It's definitely above the 25 level that we would love to see. And back testing wise works really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an iron butterfly here in EFA, basically selling the 62 call and put and then buying options out on either end $4. So we're going to go out $4 on either end and buy options. Those will be really cheap. And we're going to take in a net credit of about $126. So small credit. We'll only do two of these iron butterflies. We'll start laddering into some more positions in EFA. This is just our first one here. But as the thing starts to move, if it does, we'll start laddering into new positions and kind of recenter the strategy along the way, as we talked about in kind of previous episodes. So you can go back. I think it was one or two episodes from here. And we talked about laddering. And so the whole concept of doing that, why we do it, how we do it, et cetera. But this is the first position that we have in EFA. So we're going to go ahead and start it right with a just basic neutral iron butterfly. Again, long options, $4 out on either end and gives us about $126 credit. We'll look to close this trade at about 25 to 30% of the credit received as a profit. So we'll put that order in as a GTC automatic closing trade and start letting this thing work itself out. Thanks for listening to the Option Alpha podcast. If you liked what you heard, please drop by iTunes and leave a rating or comment. Plus, you can get everything. Free email updates for future shows, transcripts, video tutorials, case studies, and more. Just visit our website at optionalpha.com. All right, so I truly hope you guys enjoyed today's show and got at least one thing out of it that you can apply right now to make you a smarter, more profitable trader investor. As always, you guys can get additional links mentioned in the show and some related video training from today's show by going to optionalpha.com slash show 88. That's just the number 88, optionalpha.com slash show 88. Until next time, happy trading.